Hey guys, welcome back to Military Surplus Sunday. I hope you guys enjoyed the videos. Uh, I still have a lot more gear to review, so please make sure you're here every Sunday. I'll start the videos around 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Like, subscribe, put all those comments down below. That really helps the algorithm and helps keeps this channel supported. All right, so what I have here is the LBV or the LBV-88. Um, I've actually worn this uh, during training exercises when I was a young Marine myself. Uh, I will say they are okay. There's some good points and there's some not so good points on this belt. Uh, I originally started in 92. We were issued the old Alice system and then we went to this. Um, this was still kind of in testing uh, until it got pushed out to all the infantry Marines. Uh, it was more of a uh, special forces type of rig before it came to the regular units. So I'm just going to give you a little bit of the history. The IIFS Individual Integrated Fighting System was introduced in 1988 to serve a fighting and existence carrying system, a possible replacement for the old ALICE. Um, the ALICE has been fielded by the United States Armed Forces since 1973. So this kit right here was made to replace it. The IIFS or LBV replaces the partially obsolete concept of the shoulder harness in the style of suspenders and individual equipment belt design with the newer concept of a tactical load bearing system that employs a vest. The vest is being the main component is also known as the TLBV tactical load bearing vest sometimes referred to as the LBV-88 or the M1988 LBV also known as the Enhanced Tactical Load-Bearing Vest. Okay, we just call it the LBV. Uh, the, uh, let's see, the um, LBV has its conceptual roots in combat and load-bearing vest systems, and it was designed by Natik Laboratories for employment to use by Navy SEALs during the Vietnam War. Trial variants of the LBV have utilized both Alice Water Canteen Cover Alice Field first aid dressing case and woodland camouflage pattern and entrenching tool cover uh, remained unchanged and was also utilized during testing. Uh, the original design as well as during troop trials and tactical load carrying vest incorporated panels made of Kevlar to improve the protection of the infantry riflemen when worn in conjunction with the personal armor system or group for group troops flak vest okay basically what they're saying is they're talking about the flak vest the weight of this prototype was very prototypic was very considered to be too excessive to continue to consider this concept so what they tried to do was add armor into it, it didn't work obviously because it's too heavy along with the tactical load carrying vest a new individual equipment belt was later introduced featuring the black plastic ITX fast tech quick release buckle and redesigned adjustment system. The original concept included the use of earlier earlier renewed individual equipment belts and featured a gray style release buckle which I don't have on this anymore. Uh, commonly referred to uh, referred to due to its early prestige manufacture as the Bianchi pistol belt. I do actually have the new Bianchi pistol belt. It was decided instead of contracting a new Alice component with woodland camouflage bottom that the remainder of the already existing widely available Alice components will be utilized with the IIFS or LBV. Uh, these being mainly the water canteen cover, field dressing, aid case, and trenching cold small arms ammunition cases. Like the Alice system, along with the same concepts, the IIFS is broken down into fighting load and existing load. In 1995, due to the issues concerning the chest back ventilation caused by the non-breathing fabrics incorporated, the tactical load carrying vest was redesigned and officially redes redesigned the ETLBV. No changes in the national stock number have been made. The two major modifications have the slant have been the slant of the magazine pouches inward for easily removal for easier removal of small arms magazines and the exchange of fabric panels, which retain the body heat bolt suited on front and back with lighter mesh panels. The IIFS continually rapidly replaced the modular load was replaced by the load M the Molly. 
module lightweight load carrying equipment so what they had done is they replaced all this they replaced the panels I have this kind of splayed out but this is what they were talking about the panels were replaced um, when I first got issued this there was no mesh then they got the mesh ones alright guys so before we even get into this I just want to give you guys like the overview so I have this thing loaded up basically the way I would wear it or the way I have worn it before there are plus and minuses to this belt like I read before in the history of it um, this is the new Bianchi belt this Bianchi belt uh, is probably the new issue one it has the black plastic buckle uh, the adjustments are on the side uh, if you have the older one it will work the older one was the gray buckle the gray buckle typically if you look on eBay or Amazon they're only in size medium I am no longer a size medium so it doesn't fit you could buy these brand new on Amazon so the belt is going to be one cost and the LBV or the LBV 88 I know they call it something else but this is what we're calling it all right uh, you're gonna look at about 50 bucks for the vest itself on this vest if I splay it out this way you can see these panels right here these panels right here are mesh so you have mesh 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 and mesh on the other side that was to help for ventilation now this gear the LBV does not come with any type of body armor or any type of ballistic armor uh, you are supposed to wear your issued flak jacket and then wear this over it to carry all your ammunition. What they had done is they decided that instead of carrying your cartridge or your magazine pouches on the belt itself, they moved it up into the vet, into the chest area. Typically what you would call today a, uh, a uh, either you would use a plate carrier or a chest rig so they were already on it back in 1988 all right so what you would do is you would put your magazines these carry three on the top pouch and one on the bottom pouch so you're only able to carry six on the vest itself and then if you wanted to add more magazine pouches you would have to use the old Alice system and then you could put them on the belt all right uh, this allowed you a little bit lower profile. The only difference is you do not have any modularity. These things are completely sewn in to the vest itself. You have two grenade pouches that are also sewn into the pouch. You have one on each side. Again, you cannot move those. What I have in here is just, I, don't know, I have this old style tourniquet. All right, tourniquet, this is pretty old. I don't know if it has a date on it anymore, but this is the old style tourniquets that they were issuing. I doubt you could find those anymore and then in here I would either put like a compass or something like that okay there is no internal pockets at all all right if I can get the uh, let's see do I have the NSN number yeah the NSN number is eight four one five zero one two nine six eight eight seven five and it just says vest tactical load bearing enhanced that's all it is so it's the enhanced tactical all right take a little bit of walk around this thing you the, the thing that's great about this is the fact that it's a major improvement in my opinion over the old Alice system because of the padding the padding is quite robust as you can see you got about two and a half inches of padding it's quite comfortable it does have latching so if you needed to put something inside here you can it's still using some of the old metal Alice clips or I should say buckles so this was kind of replaced with most of the plastic nowadays but these was still in style back then up here you could you could run something through here or add another Alice pouch so what I would do is on one of the sides you could either put like a like another pouch or a grenade pouch and put make that your admin kit if you wanted to also if you had to run a, um, a radio you can run the radio through here so it's not flipping up same on both sides these are adjustable they are not adjustable at the vest side they are just sewn in okay they're just sewn in as you can see they're sewn all the way through here okay you do have adjustments on the side the adjustments on the side come with the 550 cord and then has this lock right here so you would adjust it to your kit and then you could lock it in 
Uh, I've never seen these be able to hold anything, so what we used to do is we would just uh, use duct tape. All right, we'd use duct tape for that. As a matter of fact, you'll see on a lot of the uh, surplus kit, you'll see a lot of these are, will come taped up. Uh, the reason is you don't want it to get caught on anything and also you don't want the buckles to unlatch. All right? On the rear, again, on the rear of the padding, you'll see it also has the same clips. All right? These are metal clips all the way down uh, to this back panel. All right? As you move around, you'll see, again, it has the mesh. The difference here is instead of just having a straight strap, you have this little mesh panel that also hooks to the side. All right, so that's going to give you a little bit more stability when you hook it onto your uh, flak jacket or when you wear it over your flak jacket, I should say. It does come with plastic rings. In my opinion, I think the plastic rings were ideal for holding this up. Now, this happens to be uh, an, a newer generation butt pack. I know in the Marine Corps or in the military, I don't think we use butt packs anymore. We just use assault packs, uh, but this was still big. This was the transition from Alice. Um, you can still put in Alice in here if you needed to, if you wanted to bring this pack up. Uh, this out, this butt pack itself is newer. Let's flip it around a little bit more. I'll show you a little bit more. On the other side, again, you still have more adjustments. So you have more adjustments on the right side, as again, with this uh, 550 cord and this lock. Again, this lock never really worked all that well, so we would just tie it off, lock it up, and just put some... Uh, duct tape or fi uh, 500 mile an hour tape on there okay and then again all the way around now what I have here is a typical loadout you don't have a lot of space on here okay what the Alice did for us was it allowed one belt with very little connection so you had two connections in the front that would hook to your magazine pouches and two in the back that it would either hook to the belt or it hook to your Alice I'm sorry your butt pack so you had that what this system does is it uses strapping and buttons. So if this is my regular belt, you can see that there's a lot of strapping or I would say buttons, connections all the way around the belt, which takes up a lot of real estate. So if I just showed you the inside of this, okay, give you a better view. Okay, if you look at the inside of this, you can see almost every piece of real estate is either taken by Alice clips or the strapping of the vest itself. It doesn't allow a lot of space. Now, you're not supposed to be loading this up, you know, all that heavy anyway, but if this is your load fi fire, I'm sorry, load bearing kit, um, you need to have your ammunition, your water, your food, your sustainment, your first aid, all that stuff, it takes up a lot of space. Granted, it's a lot more comfortable and you don't have to carry all this stuff. It's completely up to you. But as a gunfighter or somebody that is in the military, this would basically be your loadout. You would have two canteens, you would have a butt pack, you would have a first aid kit, and you would have to have some way to carry your ammunition. Uh, on here, I just put a bayonet. All right, this is the, it's probably. Uh, M9 Ontario bayonet. It's a little bit heavier than the regular bayonets that we were issued. This again was also a pretty cool prototype. Uh, you can clip it on, clip it off, but it was made for the ca the cartridge belt. All right, two canteens. All right, my canteen. I have water purification in there. Canteen, canteen cup. This does happen to have the old um, thing for the gas mask. So you can, is gas mask ready? I think this is actually one of my issued ones. I still have it. I probably should have returned that. Sorry guys, if you're watching. I know supply is going to be pissed off. Inside here, it's just a regular old butt pack. Now the butt packs that you get on, I want to say eBay, are probably going to be the training. They're going to look like this. All right, they'll probably be a little bit beat up, but this one still has its rain fly on it. Um, it's made of, I think, nylon or Condura, and I just have like gloves, cold weather gear, gear in there, bandana, one MRE. All right, which one is this? Chicken noodles, chicken noodles and veggie sauce. Mm. Um, cami paint, butt wipes, lighter, that kind of thing. All right, so it's gonna have the typical kit. Now, I would also, if I was gonna go on a 
long ranger, long range lerp, or whatever it is, I'd also get my ranger roll. Ranger roll consists of your poncho, poncho liner. And on these, you would strap it underneath. Okay? You'd strap it underneath. Like I said, this one came with, that, that was already taped. I didn't do it. It actually came like that. So, uh, you would put that on there, and this becomes your assault pack or sustainment pouch. On this side, same thing, just another canteen. And then, again, on this side, over here, I have my first aid kit. Now, this is the old style first aid kits. Again, we haven't progressed to the actual IFAC yet. The old hard plastic case. Let's see if I can open it for you. All right, just throw some gloves and some stuff in there. Um, it's funny how times have changed. Um, when I first got into the Marine Corps, it was 1992. We didn't really care too much about first aid. I know it sounds crazy, but we haven't had too many war conflicts uh, until later on. And then Desert Storm kicked off, and then a whole bunch of other stuff kicked off. Okay, so we, we got better with the first aid kits. But all the way from Vietnam, all the way through then, it, there wasn't too much going on. Uh, now we have the pullout kits, the IFAX, the tourniquets, all the great stuff that are saving guys' lives. All right, so it's really important that you have this. Sometimes what we would do is, as an SOP, we would take these and we would put it on the side of the butt pack. That's why the butt, most of the butt packs have these two uh, molly straps on the other side. I'm sorry, not molly, uh, Alice straps on each side so you can attach other kit to it. I never really liked that. If it was SOP, it was SOP. I didn't like that because it always wound up, this hard plastic always wound up digging into my side and it was never very comfortable. So, uh, another thing that they also, if you can find one, which was really good, is they had a pad that would also connect to the cartridge belt itself. Um, I used to have one, it would snap on. Again, you're taking up more real estate on that belt. If you can find one, I would put one on. Reason is because all these little metal strips will wind up digging into your side. Now I know someone's gonna say, man, fuck up, Marine, you know, all that great stuff. Fine, I get it, okay? You're supposed to be tough. You're supposed to be hardcore. The problem is, is that once these things start making little burr marks into your skin, uh, you can get infected, all right? And a lot of times you would have Marines get sick, get hurt because we're in sand, we're in water, we're in really nasty conditions, and these things, after, I don't know, miles and miles of walking around or rucking around with this kind of stuff digging into your side, it creates sores, it creates uh, damage to your skin, you get infection, you get sick, okay? So it's not really worth it. I think a lot of the comfortability factor is not here. I think that you eat up a lot of real estate, but in my opinion, this was a better improvement over the Alice simply because the padding got a little bit better and then they moved the uh, the old cartridge belt or the old um, uh, magazine pouches up to the top. All right, and you're gonna see that a lot in the transition. All right, so in my opinion, I think it's worth it for 50 bucks. Uh, you pay 50 bucks for this and I think around 20 bucks for the belts, the newer belts, if you wanna still buy them, they still are available. I'll put the links down below. All the canteens and all the other stuff you're gonna to have to get on your own. Um, but it's not a bad start. I, I think if you are somebody that's old school or doesn't want to spend too much money, like on the, you know, if you want to don't want to spend too much or you don't like the FLC system, which is the new Molly system, that this is not a bad purchase. Uh, I purchased it myself. I like having different variations of gear and kit and, and, and uh, things that I can use in the field. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you appreciate this video. Please like and subscribe. Go to Patreon, go to uh, Facebook, Instagram, all those things. Go to 3riverblades.com. Check out all the knives that I have up there. Also, go to 3 River Kydex. Uh, we're making knife sheets and holsters. Thank you very much, and as always, guys, please stay safe.